with a <laughs> this is this is part of the this is part of the the, uh, the charm of CSPS. We we have a we have a wider range age range group. I think there's probably 40 years difference between uh, between Dennis and and, and David. And uh, we've got someone who fit right in the middle there. <laughs> he's, he's came to a, he came to a, a gallery opening and he said, well, hell, you got a great stage there. How come I haven't performed on it? And so let's, uh, let's bring him to the stage. His name is Willie Barber. He's here to do some spoken word. Good evening. This is from a collection of monologues called Snapshots. The Observer. Oh, wow! His body rocked while his eyes held steady to the black plastic eyepiece. Far out. He shakes slightly and continuously like a tremor was unleashing in him every second. He's skinny, that ultra-thin skinny that comes with aggressive speed use. Shit! His head is bobbing now, like those little toy dogs you see in the back window of people's cars, that little fake body forever still in perpetuity, and the head rocks violently back and forth. In his case, his eye remains at the eyepiece, unblinking, motionless, while his head moves around it like the planets move around the sun. Jesus Christ! And with that, he leans back away from the telescope and slowly lowers his lanky frame into the Adirondack chair that is containing him at this moment. He stares down the body of the telescope. He stares into the dissipated distance that twilight brings to the far-off hills. The diffuse light of the fog is moving across the bay moving in and swallowing up the coastal cliffs. The warmth of yellow and amber light punctuates the foothills behind. Lights are being lit to stave off the oncoming night. They pepper the hillside. And it's to this hillside that the observer is focused. Almost in death, he sits without moving, body totally still. Now I'm watching this, sitting on the porch, leaning on the arm of an old sofa ruined by too many nights in the sea air and stained by the local dogs that spend their nights curled, seeking what little warmth they can find from the cushions. I'm watching his silence now, his stillness now. I go to take a hit off the joint I'm holding, but it's gone out. So I strike a match, and with the explosion of the sulfur, the man bursts out of his chair like a bullet to the target. His eye finds the eyepiece. His long legs cross and uncross, cross and uncross, like some ancient timepiece tracking the perpetual preciseness of the seconds. This continues for minutes, long minutes, while well, the joint is almost gone by now. The random movements of his legs heighten my high, and for an eternity, in minutes, there is no other movement in the world. Legs cross and uncross, cross and uncross, cross and uncross. And then in an instant, he unfolds, stands up, looks me straight in the eye, and says, Thanks, man, bitch, and telescope. And he walks into the house. Well, I'm curious to see what's captured his, his attention during the time he had spent observing. So I moved to the telescope, still pointed towards the hillside. Bending slightly, I placed my eye, as he had only moments ago, to the black plastic eyepiece. And I look, and I see nothing. Avoid blackness. So I reach up to the focus knob and I turn it, and now all I see is focus nothingness. <laughs> Perplexed, I straighten up and I look down the body of the telescope and I remove the black plastic lens cover. <laughs> the kiss. Aren't you afraid? No. Really? Yeah. Should we do it? Yeah. And slowly you push your body higher above her stomach. 
and then your hands slip against the wet grass and gravity pulls you down and your face, your face makes soft contact with her face. Mmm, you say. Stop it, get off, she laughs, pushing lightly at your arms. Get off me, dope. You rise up again, and now you can see down the hill, wet grass glistens, and with a tug you roll, you roll her over on top. But now she slips, and again, a little gravity and soft contact, but this time you're too near the edge of the hill. And in that very moment before gravity wins, you know how those cartoon characters feel in the moment of discovery and despair. You know when the coyote, when he's bought that acne flying device, or he's chasing the roadrunner with the roadrunner catcher cannon, and he shot himself off the side of the cliff. In that moment when he realizes just what he's done and he looks down and he sees that he's three miles over the little tiny river in the canyon below, just like that feeling when he falls, and you fall, and gravity wins. Before you could do anything at all, you're twirling and tumbling down the hill, just like you've done a thousand times before, alone, because this time you're not. And she's tucked herself into your side, and you feel her sweet breath on your neck, and she's laughing against your cheek, and you're laughing with her. And you bring your arms tight around her waist, pulling her into you, pulling her softness into you. And down and down you go, round and round you go, until you tumble out of each other's arms, landing side by side in a dizzying, spinning heap at the bottom of the hill. And she's still laughing. And you're up on your elbows looking down at her, and she is beautiful. The most beautiful person you have ever seen. And you get that feeling, you know that feeling starts in your stomach and then moves everywhere. You get hot and sweaty, all in an instant. All the while, she is still laughing. And you look down at her sweet, beautiful face. And her eyes are closed, her mouth slightly open. Sweet, rosy lips calling to your lips. And you pull yourself closer. She's smiling now. She's driving you wild. So you figure there is no time like the present and if you don't kiss her now, you will have turned 14 for nothing. <laughs> and slowly you bring your lips closer and closer. And as you lean in, she throws open her eyes. And at first her eyes sparkle with that little leftover laughter until her brain realizes that you have puckered and are heading in for the big kiss. In a blink of an eye, she gets that, oh my God, what the fuck are you doing? Look on her face <laughs> while you're stuck in mid-flight. Lips puckered, aimed towards her target, and when she starts, and then she starts to laugh, howling, hysterical, contagious laughing that catches you off guard. So you start to laugh. Except you haven't been using your mouth to breathe. That's been in kissing mode. So your entire reflexes are thrown off, and as the laughter starts to explode out of your nose, so does a stream of snot all over the side of her face. Sorry! You yell as she runs up the hill to her house. I'm really, really sorry. You don't see her for the rest of the summer. The Feast. I can't stand the loneliness of hunger. I am fat because I can't stand to be hungry. Are you ready to order? The waitress asks. I look into her eyes. Past her, look buddy, just order, blank stare. Into her soul. Do you see me? See what? My fat? Yes. Does it disgust you? Yes. Why? Honey, are you ready to order or do you need some more time? I'm sorry, I was daydreaming. I'll have the veggie soup and a salad. What kind of fat-free dressing do you have? Maybe a vinaigrette? I'm working on my weight. Yep. And that'll be, that, that'll be fine. No croissants, or uh, no croutons, and a glass of water. Thanks. No problem. She says. She starts to walk away. My eyes follow her as she steers through the crowd with her pelvis. She has gypsy hips. Nice, big, firm, beautiful gypsy hips. I can see myself lying with her. 
cuddling with her, holding her, stroking her, lying entwined in bed together. Is this disgusting? I ask. What? My fat? No. And with that, she gets me hard again. Does that disgust you? No. She laughs. She's my gypsy, my randy, sexy, hairy, racy gypsy. We make love, hot, intense, passionate love. She pulls me into her. We blend into each other. We melt into each other. I look at her face, her eyes closed, then open the spark of passion, the love in those eyes, a dream come true. Still daydreaming, hon? Here's your soup. I'm pulled away. I look up at her. She sets the bowl in front of me. I look in her eyes. Only an empty stare looks back at me. That I see you, but I don't see you stare. She smiles. Anything else, hon? I try to smile, but I can't. I hide my eyes. You know what? Could I also order two double cheeseburgers and a, an order of fries? Steak up fries? No problem. I see the glint in her eyes, the what a fat slob look. Oh yeah, and some pie and apple, maybe? I'll check. She's in a hurry to get away from my table now. Again, I watch her as she walks away. Do you feel me watching you? Does it disgust you? Yes. I'm hungry. I start eating. I can't stand the loneliness of hunger.